Hello everybody. Today I've got something different. So I've been getting a lot of views and comments on my how to install Minecraft server onto my Raspberry Pi. That minute that blah, that video is 51 minutes long. It does work, but it is convoluted and not necessary because there is a faster way. So I've been helping a friend uh, work out some bugs and stuff on a program that he wrote that's called BSCC. So what we want to do is first thing you want to run uh, sudo apt get update and it's going to update your software because you want to be up to date. Okay, now that's done. What we need to do is we need to cl get git clone from his git. So git clone git colon forward slash forward slash uh, git hub dot com forward slash kicker two two zero zero four forward slash b s c c stash m c dash e d i o n and enter now it's cloning everything from his github to my computer so as you can see we have a new folder called b s c c m c minecraft so let's go ahead and cd into that and if we check with ls, you can see there's a bscc folder, Debian, files, install, license, and readme. So what you need to do is chmod plus, oops, plus x in uh, capital I, install.sh. Okay, now we need to run install.sh. And this will pop up. So now what we need to do is press enter. It's going to gather the information about your computer because this can run on almost any ARM pro processor and it can run on x86 uh, Linux processor uh, servers and stuff. Okay so now it's done it says we need to run BSCC so we go out and type in capital BSCC and there we go. So now we pick what server we want. Well, if you're running this on a Pi, then you want something lightweight, like a bucket server. So we're gonna go Spigot, fast, lightweight, bucket style server, latest version. And we can do 1.9.2. So it's going to automatically go to the web and get the file and put it where it needs to be. So now we have to select how much RAM. Well, I know that this computer has 900 and uh, like 75 megs of RAM. So I'm just going to give enough for the system to run. So I don't know. Well, I'm going to do 800 megs and then enter and your minimum value uh, just leave 128 now it's going to attempt to start the server now it's attempting to start the server now what this is doing is going to prompt you to sign the eula when you start a server you have to put true in the eula text well since this is an automatic system it has to start the server let the server crash and then it should open up the EULA. It takes about a minute, I think, is what he has the time set to, because slower systems, if he has the time set too fast, it will crash, and uh, faster systems, the faster it is, it will, the EULA prompt will show up faster. So this is just because it's running on a Raspberry Pi, it'll take a mm, minute or so. So once this is done, 
Okay, so as you can see, we now have a prompt, a EULA agreement. By changing the statement below from tr uh, to true, you are indicating you agree to the EULA. And you visit this website to read the EULA. So, of course, we want to hit true. So, once you hit true, that's it. Now we run BSCC menu. All right, so now we type in BSCC menu. And here we are. So first thing you want to do is hit start server. Now it says this will take a little bit, and it will. Um, so I have HTOP pulled up on another window here. I'm just going to resize it to match what my current window is. All right, so let's pull this up. And as you can see in here, we have HTOP, and we can see that um, the server is starting up. Right now, they're using 100 and some uh, percent of CPU. And there should be four uh, of these running because it'll use all four threads. So give it time, it will eventually start. So if you want to check on it, all we have to do is go to the admin only. So hit enter, and then the password here is PASS. That's it. Correct pass. All right, so if we click on console, now we can see what's going on. So it's currently generating the spawn area. So to get out of console, you just hit, you keep tapping Q until it leaves. Okay, that time I only had to do it once. Okay, well, while we're doing that, let's go back in. And so as the server's starting, we can check on some information. You can go to info and it'll pull up the current status of the server so right now we are running BSCC version 1 or version 0.3 sorry I really misread that um, we are running server version 192 currently player limit is set to uh, 20 people current CPU usage is 27 and a half Server uptime is whatever that says. Current RAM available, five, uh, 514 megs. Uh, total storage used slash left, 20 megs out of 6 gigs. And you can see I'm currently running version 1.8 of uh, the Java. So if you hit refresh, it'll constantly just refresh but since I have HTOP running in another window I don't really need that um, it is a nice thing to uh, be able to go into the admin section and uh, watch the script build the server um, he did add one new thing to the SCC and that is update the update script will keep everything fun rolling. Keep the fun rolling. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm currently running the newest, so I don't have to do anything. He just added that feature last night, I do believe. Um, and there is some more features coming, uh, which I can't wait for. Uh, he's he We were talking, and he's supposed to implement the feature that allows you to auto start the server when power is restored. So if your server shuts down and then the power comes back on or you plug it back in and you turn it on, then it'll auto start the server. That way, if that's all you're doing with your machine, you never have to worry about downtime as long as your server is powered then as soon as it regains power, it will start the server back up. So I'm going to go back into admin and check on the server here. Oh, wait. Yep, there it goes. 
So we're still generating spawn area. So I will be back when this is done. Oh, hey, look at that. Our server is now up and running. So, if I pull in my Minecraft here, I already got it pre-sized to the window. If we look here, edit, um, this is the uh, URL, and just make sure to put colon 25565 on it, because otherwise, you could be directed to my other server, which is running on a single core chip. But right now, we're talking about the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and log in. So again, this is a freshly made server. So it's going to be laggy for the first few minutes. Um, the best thing I can tell you to do is to fly around and load the world in for the first five to 10 minutes. Just load and fly as much as possible. Um, actually, let me pull Minecraft out of the way. So you can see I logged in and uh, so I'm going to hit C. So after hitting C in the uh, console screen, chat log pops up. Well, what that allows you to do is to uh, enter commands. So OP cryptic nexus. That's not going to work because I have capitals. There we go. Oh, whoops. Oh, I don't need the slash. I'm, I'm a dumb. OP cryptic nexus. Okay, so now you can read cryptic nexus has been opt. And we'll pull up Minecraft again and go into game mode C. Oh. I'm doing this remotely, so... Oh, come on. I want to be able to... You show remote cursor? No. Well, as you can see, the server is up. It's just, for some reason, I cannot control my guy. At all. I can make him hit, but I can't make him look around or move. Sadly, I can open up that and chat. Well, darn. Either way, you can see that the server is running, I really wish I could move. This is kind of annoying. Uh, and there's no other way I can get on here. So, either way. You can see that the server is running right here, and HTOP is running, and the server is not using a lot of processor. Grant it's just spawned in and I haven't moved. So sadly, that's really all I can do in this video, but I hope it wasn't super long and it was informative. If you liked the video, like it. If you dislike the video, like it. And I just wanna say thank you to Kicker22004 for making this software it makes the 50 minute video i did look like child's play because this is just an automated system so hopefully this helps a lot of you if you need any help comment down below and me or kicker will try to help you out um as far as port forwarding goes it really depends on your uh, router and how it does port forwarding so if you have issues with that Google your router and how to port forward with that version because every router is different and there's no easy way to explain how to port forward 
when we don't know the layout of your router. Anyways, I hope this video was good, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!